my next guest. He is a fighter that's actually going to be making his professional debut come August the 6th. He is 15-1 and one as an amateur and holds various different accomplishments in the world of mixed martial arts when it comes to combat sports. Please welcome onto the show, Jet Grant. How you doing, Jet? I'm awesome. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you, brother. No, thank you, man. Thank you for yeah. making time, man. I know uh, you're busy. You know, you got a pro debut to get ready for and you've been getting yeah. ready sure and it's coming up man it's it's coming yeah. up so i know you've been a very busy guy obviously you know fighting is a can be a stressful sport so thank you for coming yeah, to the show brother yeah no problem i'm i'm pleased to be here and uh you know talk about my journey and talk about mma yeah it'll be great awesome so talk about your journey jet i want you to give uh i want to give you a minute or two to just tell the audience who you are that we can get a feel for uh, who you are while we're doing this interview yeah, so absolutely. Uh, yeah, my name is Jet Grand. I'm from uh, Canada, uh, Alberta, uh, Red Deer. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm from. Um, I'm 23 years old right now. I have, uh, I've been training since I was about 12 years old. Uh, so I've been training about 10 years, a little over that. Um, I've been training MMA uh, specifically. You know, I've also cross trained in other martial arts, wrestling, boxing, BJJ, all that. Uh, you know, I'm currently 15 1 as an amateur. Uh, I hold the XFFC uh, lightweight amateur title. I hold the Havoc uh, lightweight amateur title for uh, Canada. And then also, I won the 2018. 2018 uh, IMMF uh, Junior Welterweight World Championships. And then I won the 2019 IMMF uh, Pan American Championships and then uh, 2019 Canadian Nationals. So, yeah, that's some of my accomplishments. And lots of them. Yeah, man. I'm just here. To, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome, brother. Well, thank yeah. you for coming on, brother. And uh, I, lo I love that, man. I mean, you're literally, you know, you're putting in the work, you're grinding, you know, 15 minutes as, as an amateur. You know, it's, it's tough to even compel to have a, a winning record in the sport of mixed martial arts just because, you know, everyone that you face is tough and the preparation oh, is so rigorous, man. So it's yeah. uh, really impressive. And finally, you'll, you'll be making your debut, man. But before, yeah. you know, I jump the gun and we talk about that pro debut, which we will, uh, let's talk about why mixed martial arts. So you started training at 12 years old, like you said, and it, did, did you ever, did you do it because it was your parents or was it all on you? And when you started, did, did you start with the intention of competing? I, you know what, I actually kind of did because like, yeah, when I started, I actually, uh, I did a whole bunch of other sports. Like I did like, uh, you know, gymnastic skating, you know, but I did skiing for a couple of years. Like I did skiing. That's the one sport I stuck with, but then I kind of got tired of that. You know, it was okay. It was, you know, but I wanted to try some, something else. And then, you know, I kind of watched, uh, you know, I watched the karate kid. I was like, Oh, I want to try martial arts now, you know, like, <laughs> so I, you know, I did a little bit of karate and it was good, but like, you know, then I kind of start around when I started karate, I only did it for a couple months, but then I started watching some UFC uh, on leashes, you know, like I, and then I got really hooked. I'm like, Oh, this looks really fun. You know, like, you know, like, so I, started watching that and then my friend uh invite he was training at the time say same age he invited me over for an mma class uh over at pure fitness uh with uh ufc fighter uh, jace mcdonald it was him his gym at the time so uh yeah so i went over there and then like the first day first day it was it was pretty rough but like uh the that week I was like, I just fell in love with it. Like instantly. Like I just, I like, I knew like literally within like a week or two, I knew this was like what I wanted to do as a career. Like, you know, that at least pursue so cool. it as a career. That sounds yeah. so cool. Yeah. Jason McDonald, so, man, yeah. uh, you know, legend, UC vet, man, in my opinion there. I yeah. Growing up uh, myself, uh, I watched a lot of Jason McDonald fights. He's one of the athletes, like from my earliest memories as an MMA fan and what got me hooked. He's one of the names that I remembered, you know, as a kid growing up, I'm like, yeah. Jason McDonald, Jason McDonald. Um, yeah. you know, saw various of his fights, man. It was a very respected, uh, fighter on there, man. So not a bad guy to start with, man. <laughs> not, not yeah, exactly. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> and now, uh, yeah. And then, um, you know, I started with him and then, uh, you know, he kind of decided to, he just wanted to focus on the CrossFit side of business. So he kind of got away from the MMA. When that happened, I transferred over to Rashido uh, Red Deer. 
under Gary Vig, my head coach now. And I've just, uh, I've stuck with that gym ever since. So yeah, I'm now question for you, Jet. Uh, are you in Canada or are you, or are you basing your training out in the U S Oh, I'm uh, basing out of uh, Canada right now at the moment. Okay. No problem. So you're, yeah. uh, so you, have you traveled, have you fought in the U S though as an amateur? No, I've never fought in the U S I've trained there a couple of times. Okay. Uh, I went to uh, CSW, uh, with Eric Paulson's Eric Paulson's gym, uh, those guys. Uh, yeah, I've trained there a couple of times. I don't know if you've heard of that gym. Uh, Josh Barnett, he used yeah, to train out of there. And, never heard of him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so you were growing up in Canada. You're doing mixed martial arts. Obviously, Canada has got some fantastic athletes. Obviously, look further than, you know, no further than George St. Pierre, who's such yeah. a huge name in Canada. Now, what was it like growing up, though, with that dream that you had? What was it like? Uh, did you ever feel discouraged that people tell you, when you said it out loud, fighting, you want to do that? Really? Ha ha. You know what I mean? Obviously, they, obviously they wouldn't laugh at you now. But yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I like, they kind of did, you know, like, yeah, there's some, you know, some people are like, Oh, you should, uh, you know, like, yeah, you should always have a backup plan, which I still think is smart, but like, you know, at the same time, yeah, there, yeah, there's always people, you know, trying to discourage you some, you know, it's just the way it is, but you know, I just, I just, was too busy training most of the time to focus on that stuff, you know, like, you know, oh, so, I, I yeah. agree with you. I mean, screw what people yeah. think, man, in my opinion. Exactly. I mean, you, yeah. you do, you, you do your journey you make decisions yeah. uh, that are best for you. Now going yeah. through your amateurs, what was your first fight? Like, what was you, the preparation for that? How did you feel jitters? What was taking your first punch like, man? Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, that was a, so actually before my first fight, I did a lot of grappling tournaments. So like a lot of no gi tournaments. I did a couple wrestling tournaments too. Uh, I think I did like three, or f- I think I did four wrestling tournaments. I did like about at least, I think probably like 25 gra- uh, no gi tournaments. So like I, like I, so when I went in the first Kate, uh, when I had my first fight, I wasn't really nervous. Okay. But I had a lot of adrenaline and I, I don't think I really knew how to control it at that time. So like, you know, the first, my first fight, I just rushed in, just took the guy down right away. I, almost, I put him in an arm bar for like 15 seconds in the fight, but like I, adrenaline, everything, I couldn't get the finish and he kind of wiggled out. And then, yeah, I, you know, I kind of blew my, uh, blew my gas a little bit, but yeah, I was it you know, I still able to control the fight and everything. And, you know, and that, yeah, that fight, like, yeah, I, I didn't really take much punches. Like, I think he landed like one good punch on me, but like, other than that, like, you know, it was, uh, yeah, like, yeah, I was, and then the next fight, uh, XFs, uh, that was, uh, I had a year in between, uh, those fights. Um, so yeah. And then, um, uh, yeah, that next fight, I got off a of camp. I did. I just finished a camp. I went to Thailand actually for six weeks, uh, training at Phuket Top Team. Uh, yeah, really good training uh, over there when I was 18. And then, yeah, my next fight was against uh, I think Danon E. Holt was his name. Uh, you know, a tough guy. Uh, you know, just a tough guy. Uh, you know, I. But yeah, that fight I just because my first fight was a decision. I'm like, I don't want to. I want to finish this guy, you know? And then my first guy, uh, first uh, fight I had, uh, unfortunately they weren't a loud ground and pound, which is, I don't know. It's not the greatest for me. Like it's not, I, I'm not a biggest fan of it, but oh, the right. second Amateur fight, record, right? Yeah. Amateur fights. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I only had two. So yeah, my first and third fight, uh, no ground and pound, but the rest were ground and pound. Basically, uh, basically pro rules, except no knees to the head. Okay. and uh no elbows to the head so okay. everything else is same thing yeah, yeah. now uh, when you're training then you're fighting did you ever have this moment throughout throughout uh those uh fights as an amateur where you hit somebody with your hardest punch and you knew it was your hardest punch and they didn't go down uh it's and if they haven't and if they've all gone down hey man more power to you brother <laughs> more power to you brother more power to you, you know but, uh... someone once made this point that he asked this question to to a lot of athletes i'm like okay yeah. that's an interesting one so i wonder from your perspective yeah. has that ever happened no 
Not really, to so be honest. Gone, well, they, actually, no. I, I I'll turn away. Like I've I usually when I hit guys, they, they get rocked. Yeah. But uh, you know, uh, one guy, uh, I thought I could have put him away in the first, but you know, he managed to survive. Was uh Neil Gotsman. Uh, you know, that was for the XFFC lightweight title. Uh, you know, I just wanted to knock him out in the first round. That was my goal, and. Uh, you know, I just came in there. I hit him with a solid one, two. He got backed up, but then I don't know. Like, I think I kind of adrenaline and everything. I kind of tied up with him and then I started feeding him shots. You know, I didn't give myself enough space. And yeah, and like I put an almond on him in that round, but he survived, you know. So does it get awesome. frustrating? Does it get frustrating though as a, as a fighter? And you're, you know, you're just teeing off on him as hard as you can. Does it frustrate? Yeah. Does it get frustrating? I don't really think about it. I just, okay. I just like, I'm in the mode. I just like go, okay. you know, I'm, I'm ready to go five rounds. I'm ready to go one round, you know, like. Cause I'm not a patient yeah. guy, man. I, if I, if I was doing that, <laughs> I'd be like, ah, go down, go down, go down, go down. You know what I mean? It'd be very frustrating. So that, that's why I asked. It's very, very yeah. interesting here now. Yeah. Okay. So let me, let me be straightforward here. A lot of athletes go through the amateurs and I see a lot of them maybe do about five fights. You've done yeah. 16 of them. Why yeah. it was there a specific reason on why uh you uh, accumulated so many uh amateur fights before making the decision to go pro or is there no real reason behind that? No, there there is uh honestly the original game plan was uh I was set like I was honestly even debating going pro four and all, but like okay. then I seen there's a nationals tournament, so I'm like, well, this is a great way for me to get my name out, like. You know, if I win a national, uh, you know, Canadian national tournament, I think that's probably bigger than just making a pro debut, like depending where it is, you know, like it'd give me more credentials, you know, like winning a national title. So I did that, uh, you know, I had two fights uh, in nationals. Uh, unfortunately, I, I couldn't move on to the finals due to an injury, but I did win both my fights. Uh, okay. You know, I broke my nose in the last fight, unfortunately, but uh, you know, but anyways, um, so yeah, so I don't know. I just stuck with the amateur and then, and then I qualified for a uh, world. And I was like, ever since I was like 17, I had a dream of going to worlds. Like, you know, like it's worlds. Like when are you going to have the chance to go to worlds? Like you could said, you know, you get to say you're a world, uh, amateur class athlete, you know? So like, that was, that was my goal. So the original goal was to go to worlds and then after worlds go pro. But basically what I found that when I went to Worlds was like the level of competition was extremely high. Like I'd say like definitely professional level, like, you know, I, and then like you get, like I had four fights in five days. I know it's Jesus. rough, but like, yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> it was rough. Intense. Like four fights in five yeah. days. Yeah. God. But the amount of experience I gained through that was like, I, like I came out at a different fighter, like, I actually improved my skills like during those four fights in five days, like not just like experience, but like my skills. Like I learned, yeah. I learned how to pace myself in the uh, ring a lot better. I learned like, you know, different ways to ground pound. Like I actually improved my skill set. So I like, I came back and then me and my coach were talking about it. It's like, well, you know, it's also a great chance to travel the world, but also like just experience and like, you know, you look at amateur boxers, like yeah. how many fights they have. They have a ton of fights, you know. Yeah, like, like yeah, someone would you know, 50. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, yeah. So, like, and some of these guys actually, like the Russians and, uh, you know, all these guys, uh, it's not uncommon for them to have, like, like 20 amateur fights, you know, at, at least, you know, because in Russia and, like, in Bahrain, these guys are, like, sponsored athletes. Like, they're, like, it's, like, you know, Olympic athletes are sponsored over there. They're sponsored for doing amateur MMA tournaments. Like it's kind of crazy. crazy, but yeah. So the, so that's basically crazy. for me, yeah. And that's who the people I'm fighting against, like full-time sponsored athletes, you know, so it was in the was amateur great, ranks too, right? Yeah. And the amateur God, ranks. Yeah. That's intense. And just yeah. so everyone knows, like my expression, when you said like four fights in five days, it's intense. You know, I always told people, yeah. you know, the ultimate fighter, like you ever, you ever seen like the ultimate fighter show? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so like probably the, in my opinion, again, my opinion here that this is probably one of the, yeah. the toughest sports in a tournament. 
you yeah. know, pretty much like for, for myself, I mean, you're fighting about four or five times, you know, within a six week period, but you did it in five days, man. That's, <laughs> that's intense. Yeah. Man. That's intense. Yeah. yeah. God, hats off to you, brother. Yeah. And yeah, you won all of them, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> God, man. That's, yeah. That's, that's that good. was for the world. Yeah. That was for the 2018 uh, world championships or whatever. So when that yeah. happened, you were, um, uh, so I'm keep trying to keep up here. You're, were you a 10 and 0 at that, at this time? Or was this more recent? Oh uh, yeah, so I was I was I was seven and zero uh, going into that tournament, and so then you won uh, four fights. Yeah, one four fights. So, so I was eleven and zero after that. So then, what happened after that? Yeah, so after that, uh, you know, me and my coach sat down. I was gonna go pro, but I was like, me and my coach is like, well, you're getting so much experience, and you know, he said like, I would like you to stay as an amateur, get as much, get even more experience, get more fights, and then by the time you know. And yeah, so that was the game plan is just to do more amateur fights. So I did, uh, I went into Canadian nationals again. And then uh, this time I won uh, Canadian nationals uh, for 2019. I think that was in April. Then a month later, I went in May, I went over to Pan Americans, uh, the IMMF Pan American uh, championship. I won that. And then basically after that, I... A month later, I went into in June. I went and compete in the European Open Championships, but unfortunately for that one, that was my first loss. But basically, what happened was I, my first fight, I fought uh, Nate Enright. I went in, I touched gloves, you know, I shot in for a takedown right away, and then I went to a double. But then I switched over to uh, a knee tap, and then I don't know what happened, but my shoulder went over here, and then I just popped out. And then basically, like, I went on the first round. <laughs> like, it was crazy. I, had a, I don't know if they have the video out, but, like, they did. But, like, basically, I was in this guard the whole round. My arm was loose. Like, like I had oh – my, like, my shoulder was completely dislocated, right? So, like, I don't know. I was just fighting him the whole round with one arm. I was just in his guard, you know. <laughs> wow. I was, like, I was in agony, though. Like, I was – I was like, ah, ah, like I was grunting the whole time, you know, like it was painful. And then I go to my corner, I go to my corner, uh, Gary Vig, uh, my coach. And, you know, I, I basically tell him like coach, my shoulders dislocated and I can't even like lift my arm up. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, he's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep fighting or call it? You know, I probably should have called it, but I'm like, I want to keep fighting. Like, I don't know. I just couldn't give up. Like, it was hard for me, man. Like, I just mentality. Yeah, I couldn't give up. Like, so the first, so the second round I come out is, yeah, basically what happens is, uh, yeah, so I just come out. I don't know. I, I can't even remember how I come out because I couldn't, like, I maybe lift the arm up to here at most. But I managed to take the guy down with one arm. So <laughs> I was oh happy. But then, yeah, I took the guy down. And then, yeah, basically from there, though, like, I don't know what happened. My shoulder just flopped on the mat, and then he just overhooked it and just yanked it, and that was it. So, so did it yeah. kind of as a doctor? So it wasn't like a doctor's Yeah, stoppage it was or... a doctor stoppage, I think. Yeah. Okay, okay. Man, that's that's, that's a, it's a tough way to, to go down in a sense, but, I mean, obviously you learn from it, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah, you learn from it. But, yeah, you know. Yeah, it sucks, but you know you got to be prepared for the worst. You know you can't well, take every, anything for granted. You know? I, I I agree, and so that happened in 2019, correct? Yeah, 2019. Obviously, pandemic, right? Happened after that, yeah. correct? I'm sorry, yeah, did, was there something you wanted to add to that? Yeah, pandemic, and then like it took me about, I'd say like six months to for my shoulder to fully recover, and then after that, like yeah, basically it took me another six months to get back to my normal self, and then. I was actually ready to fight like a year after that. Like, I think it was March, but guess what? Like I was, I was, uh, signed up to fight in May, I think, uh, for Havoc, just a local promotion. And then, uh, basically what happened. Yeah. Pandemic happened a few days after the fight was announced. So like, yeah, it's intense, man. It's intense. Now for you as an yeah. athlete, how, and then you know, you being in Canada, how yeah. rough was that? You know, you're a fighter. You're itching yeah. to get in there. You're not only itching to get back in there, but you're coming off a loss. You want to make your pro debut. You yeah. know, you're you're ready to 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 move forward. And then the pandemic yeah. happens. How frustrating was that for you? Uh you know, yeah, it was definitely uh it definitely was like especially towards the end, like 
yeah. you know, it was definitely frustrating. You know, like I, I wanted to build my amateur career up and, you know, I've the past year I've actually, you know, I've got a couple of offers overseas, but uh, not, not for the one for uh, Pakistan. I don't know if you heard about that, but uh, no. like a couple, I've got a couple of offers from Brave as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah sorry, no, the, them. But like, I don't know, they never turned out. So, you know, it was, it was frustrating because like actually this past year I've been training for, I've been in like basically a fight camp the whole year, which is, which is decent, but like, you know, like, but none of the fights happened. So yeah, I was been, I've been extremely frustrated. And a lot of this was due to the COVID, you know, because COVID is just like setting everything in, out of off, you know. Definitely. So. Now, uh, so before, uh, before we get into this, I want to ask you, so how were you able to train with all these uh, lockdowns in Canada? Was there a basement? Because I talked to a good guy from Canada, it's Jesse Arnett. And yeah. he's a fantastic guy. Shout out to him. Uh, yeah. You know, he was telling me that, you know, he would train, I guess, in a basement or anything like that. Was that something yeah. similar uh, to your style? Well, yeah, training? we have, I actually have a big garage gym at my place. We have uh, okay, half cool. octagon with mats. We got, it's actually a pretty decent sized uh, studio. So yeah, we've, me and my guys have been able to keep up over there and stuff like that. And so I was able to train through the whole pandemic, basically. So that's good. It's not horrible. Yeah. Not the worst thing, not the worst thing in the world. I know a buddy of mine, like, the, so I'm from the Rio Grande Valley, South Texas, like, yeah, yeah, the bottom of the bottom, man, right before you get into Mexico, man. Yeah, so yeah. there's no basements there, man. The basements <laughs> yeah. aren't a thing, yeah, right? Man. There's no basements, yeah. like, basements aren't a thing over there. So, one of my guys, uh, one of my friends, uh, he trains there, and he, he told me that they would like sneak around to like the gym when the lockdown happened because he's trying to train yeah. for a fight, and they caught yeah. him, man, and they caught him, the cops caught him, and they shut him down, man. The worst yeah, like I, world, I, I did, I did kind of do that a little, not, I did kind of do that a little bit sometimes, but yeah, most of the time it was just in my garage, you know. That's good, man. That's all. Oh, that's a good thing yeah. to have. It's a good thing to have. Yeah. Now, how many fights uh, fell through though for you? Because I saw there's a, you were supposed to make your debut, your pro debut in June. That's one I saw. Yeah. Obviously that didn't, yeah. spoiler alert, that didn't happen. Uh, how many times did it, did it go through? Did, it, did, uh, did did your pro debut fall through though leading up to this uh, matchup here uh i think about yeah basically like twice so i i, oh, I think about twice it was with, it was still it was with floggers uh over in islamabad pakistan uh you know i was supposed to do that uh yeah i was supposed to do that uh twice and then basically uh against the same opponent, uh, Nestrula, Nick said, um, but yeah, just, I don't know, just COVID restrictions and actually to be honest. Okay. So I was actually, no, I was supposed to have, uh, that in April too. So I guess, I guess almost, so twice. I guess almost three times. Three, yeah. Three Jesus. times. Okay. So, but actually April. So I was about to fly out like the day before I was about to fly out. Like I didn't have any symptoms at all, but I bought, I had to go to get my PCR test because you have to do that in order to leave the country. So okay. I got my PCR test for COVID or whatever. And basically the, basically I got the results back and they said I was positive for COVID. So I was, yeah. So like I, I couldn't go, but guess what? A day after that, like I was supposed to leave that morning, I'm pretty sure. But, but the day after that, they, the Pakistan government, they said uh, they basically canceled all events, all events. So basically, they canceled the MMA fights. They canceled everything, like all the all sporting events and stuff like that. So, so I, even if I would have flew down to Islamabad, I wouldn't have been able to fight. So the whole fight back? card got canceled. Yeah. How, long, how long was that? Was that flight, flight supposed to be for you? Uh, 19 hours. Yeah, man, I would I would have been upset, brother. <laughs> I, I would have been <laughs> upset. I, I would have been. So I worked out for the best. Yeah, yeah, things happen for a reason, right? I mean, I've always yeah. we always hear that, and like for me, I've yeah. always seen that seem to find that to yeah. be true. Like you know, things happen yeah. for a reason. Saved you 19 hours on a, on a plane, brother. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Now going into this uh matchup here, obviously it's been a long road going into your professional debut, and obviously it's a it's a different opponent than the original one, correct? This is yeah. oh, Damon yeah, Orozco. He's going to be making his uh, pro debut as well. The fight will be for XFC 45, I believe. And it's going to yeah. be in Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. 
Dude, yeah, I've been I've been there, man. It's been there. It's just kind of a small place for me, man. Is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I haven't yeah. been there. So yeah. calm, calm. Stay away from Detroit, though. People okay. always tell me to stay away from Detroit. I don't know why, man. People people always tell me that kind of stuff. And it's a very calm place. It's a nice place. Not, yeah. Nothing to complain about when it comes to Grand Rapids. Now, what are you expecting from yourself going into your professional debut that's coming up? Yeah, so I expect myself to be, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to put the pressure on this guy, you know, keep him guessing, uh, mix it up between my striking, my wrestling, jiu-jitsu, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look to put it on this guy. Uh, you know, he's a tough opponent. So I'll give him that. Like he's three and two as an amateur, but uh, he's got decent skill set. Like he's got heavy hands. He's a southpaw. Uh, he's got a decent wrestling background. So, you know, he's gonna be a tough opponent. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I believe in myself, and I'm gonna go in there uh, thinking I'm one step ahead, and uh, you know. And I'm prepared to go through one round. I'm prepared to go through three rounds, you know, like I'm prepared to play it by ear. Like I'm going to see how he is. I'm going to feel him out and then I'm going to go from there. You know, I'm prepared to, I can, I think I can out wrestle him. I think I can strike with him. I, you know, I can beat him on the ground. So that's, that's how I feel. But yeah, he's a very tough opponent and he's a very worthy opponent. So. Definitely. Now for you, uh, you know, uh, Jet, you've traveled, you've already traveled, you know, you've done your traveling, you've yeah. had a good amateur career, you've yeah. gotten a lot of experience and exposure, and you've even learned a lot of lessons in the fight game, just because of your amateur career. Yeah. Now going into this, though, is there a different kind of pressure, different kinds of nerves going into your professional debut? Uh, no, not really. I, I just try to look at it as, a, as another fight, you know. I try not to get too caught up, you know. It is just get nervous. Like I, yeah, I, I still think it's just another fight, you know. So just, that's, just, that's the, my... just the same thing. Treat every single fight like a professional fight, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that and honestly, I think that's what why, I, like, that's why I think I've transitioned so well from the grappling to the MMA. Like, you know, like I've it's because like every single competition, even like when I was competing in high school, like for wrestling or even when I was, uh, doing grappling tournaments, uh, I, I went into the mindset, like of every tournament was like a professional fight. Like I, or like, a, like I was fighting for like to be the best in the world, you know, like I, like I put a lot of pressure on myself. So I'm, I'm used to that now. So yeah. what motivates you? What drives you? Well, what motivates me is, you know, I, what motivates me is to be honest. Uh, I just love the sport. Uh, that's a lot of it. And also I just want to be better every day. Like I want to improve myself. Like I want to, like, I never want to go downwards. I always want to improve my, keep improving myself. So that's what motivates me, you know, as a skill set athlete and as a person. Definitely. Now, now uh, my question for you is what's the goal go for you jet for the rest of the year yeah the goal is to have uh four fights uh this year four probably fights this under year? xfc yeah okay now you, you you had just signed a deal with them correct yeah i did and then uh so can you tell us how many fights that is or are you not allowed to talk about that or no uh i think i am yeah <laughs> i think it's i think it's four fights yeah i hope this one doesn't ago. get kill me for that one <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's about four. So it's four fights. You're planning to get, to get that deal done through by the end of 2021. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and then we'll go from there. Of course, yeah. obviously, take one fight I at a time. I just want to stay active. You know, like yeah. that's the thing. Like I just want to stay active. So yeah. I hope you stay active, and I hope you come out of yeah. it every single fight healthy, man. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Of course, you. MMA is a very grueling sport. What yeah, do fans expect from you on August the sixth? Yeah. So. Uh, they can expect the best version of Jet Grand uh, to step on uh, that hexagon, um, you know, and just to uh, fight his heart out and just put on a show, uh, you know, try, and he's going to give the best performance of his career. So. I'm very, very, very excited to, to catch that, man. Now, uh, yeah. real quick, as we're nearing the end, man, I want to talk some, uh, some other MMA, man, some UFC with you, man. Uh, yeah, you know, 100%. I'm okay, excited. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know why I'm excited for your debut, man? I'm excited just because of the fact that I love MMA. I love yeah. MMA. So 
give me all the MMA in the world and I'm going to enjoy that. So I get to watch yeah. August 6th for X at XFC. XFC, I'm sorry, saying that right. Grand Rapids, yeah. Michigan. Jet Grand making his professional debut. That's going to be on a Friday. The next day, yeah. in Houston, Texas. I'm from Texas. You know, you nice. got UFC 265, man. Derek nice. Lewis, Cyril Gunn, the main event, man. Love MMA, man. Got a great way yeah. to start, you know, a great weekend of MMA already yeah. there. So we yeah. got Derek Lewis versus Cyril Gunn for the interim heavyweight title. It's really a number one contenders matchup, man. Let's yeah, be honest is, yeah. right here. Yeah. So it's going to be a tough fight, man. Is, can you give me a pick here on who you think is going to win that fight? Yeah, that is a tough fight. Um, Very tough. I think – I think if Lewis Lewis needs to beat him in the first three rounds, I think to be yeah, honest, it's, like, it's a very interesting fight. First, maybe even two rounds, but I don't know. Like I, 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 I it's hard to predict fights, but I think I think a serial will probably beat him in a five round decision. But I think, I but think we'll so see. Too. Lewis has got that power, you know, and you know, serial has got, you know, he's good at not getting hit, but at the same time, he'll. I, I've watched the Volkov fight, like you know, he's he gets hit a little bit, you know, and all you need to do to lose against like a Lewis or a Nagano is to get hit just a little bit. Yeah. Just just one shot. And that's, you can't make a mistake. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough fight because for uh, Ghana to win, I think he's going to have to uh, stick and move for five rounds, basically. It's it's very interesting matchup, man. You know, the thing about Lewis thing that's frustrating about fighting a guy like Derek Lewis, man, is you could be winning, you know, with 14 minutes and, you know, yeah. 14 minutes and 30 seconds of a fight in the last 30 seconds, man, this guy has the power to, to, you know, beat you. And it's not even yeah. me telling you we've seen it happen already. We've oh, seen it yeah. happen. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's a very dangerous matchup. I like gone this matchup here. Um, you know, the one I'm really interested in, and I, I got to show some love to here to Amanda Nunez and Juliana Pena, man. I'm very intrigued with this fight. Yeah. That's uh, a good we're one. giving Juliana Pena a lot, you know, of a, of a chance yeah. here. Of course, Amanda Nunez is the goat. Juliana, yeah. though, uh, you know, kind of a spotty, spotty record here. She had taken some time off. You know, she yeah. got submitted a couple fights ago. And, yeah. you know, I like her. And I yeah. tell people that she's got a chat. But a lot of people are telling me no no chance in hell. <laughs> no, obviously. But, you know, MMA, man. Yeah, MMA, yeah. MMA is a very real sport. We saw Matt Serra beat, you know, George yeah. St. Pierre, man. And that's yeah. a fight that I, re- I refer to because it's something that yeah. just, wow, you can't believe yeah. it. Uh, do, you, do you have Amanda Nunez winning this fight? Yeah, I think I do, but like at the same time, like it's MMA, anything can happen. And uh, Julia, uh, Juliana Pena is a pretty good wrestler, you know. So like, who knows? Like maybe she can put Nunes on her back and make it an interesting fight. Because when was the? I don't think when was the last time Nunes got put on her back? I can't, back, I can't know? even so remember that to be honest with you. Yeah, I think probably Cats and Gano, you know, and Cats and Gano managed to win that fight, but like. So, like, you never know. Like, I don't think a lot of people really test uh, Nunes' uh, wrestling very much. So, yeah, like, that's why know. I give her a shot. That's why I give her a yeah. shot, man. It's, yeah. it's going to be a very interesting yeah. one. The one, man, I'm really excited to see is Vicente Luque versus Michael Chiesa, man. That's a bomber of a fight. That is. That's a really good one. Yeah, I'm excited that's... for that one, man. Oh, yeah. goodness. Yeah. Both guys are on win streaks. I think, and I've told people this, I love Michael Chiesa. Chiesa is fantastic. I love his story, you know, watching him on The Ultimate Fighter and everything that he's fought through. Yeah. Man, Luke looks like a freaking animal, though, man. I'm very excited. Yeah, especially his last fight with uh, Tyrone. Yeah. That was his last fight, right? Yeah, yeah. that was his last fight. Yeah, 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 that was a uh, freaking yeah. beast, man. I'm, I'm excited. I yeah. I think I, I want to lean towards Chiesa just because Chiesa's got more experience. And even, yeah. even though Luke is a very experienced fighter, I think, I think uh, Kies has had some more big time fights, man. He's been on the yeah. limelight there. He's been ma- in main events, win or lose. He's had that experience built already in yeah. there. Oh my good, my I think for that, yeah, I think for that fight, it's gonna come down to who wins the wrestling because I think if it stays standing, uh, Luke is gonna win. No, oh, absolutely. It, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so yeah, it's gonna come down to who wins the wrestling. But if uh, Kies can out grind him, you know, mix the wrestling in and get him on the ground, I think he's gonna have a huge advantage. You know, yeah, it's gonna be very yeah. interesting, man. I'm I'm very excited yeah, to watch all is. these fights, Jet. I'm yeah. very excited to watch you. Is there anything you want to let the audience know uh, before we sign off? Uh, no, that's it. I just think uh, pleasure to having me, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. No, thank you so much. You know what? And actually, you know, yeah. shame on me. I got one more question for you, brother. Okay, absolutely. Got one more. Let's do one more here. So, what is your ultimate goal in the world of mixed martial arts? What's the one thing you want to do, man? Um, uh, I want to be 
you know, I'm, I want to be a uh, top 10 in the world at the, at the very least. And I, you know, I, I strive to be uh, the best in the world. So I'll just uh, leave it at that. Nice. Now is, is your, is, is that a uh, signing with the UFC or do you not care about that? Yeah, I, I think it'll probably be the UFC, but uh, you know, you never know. Of course, man. Oh, man. That was uh, Jet yeah. Brand. He's 51 as an amateur, folks. Yeah. Be making his professional debut on August 6th, XFC 45, Grand Rapids, Michigan, folks. Can't wait to watch him uh, compete, folks. Stay tuned for everything else that he's got going on. Uh, Jet, can they, where can the audience follow you on? Oh, uh, yeah. So you can follow me on my Instagram, uh, Jet, uh, J E T T M M A. And then also you can go on my athlete page on uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Jet Brand uh, MMA. And I'm gonna have. And then the also, uh, yeah. I, any any uh, any other platforms? Oh uh, yeah, and then you can add me on my Facebook profile to uh, Jet Brand. Perfect, uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I, I mostly just use that as an athlete page too. So. Yeah. Awesome, man. That's awesome, folks. Yeah. I'm gonna have awesome. all that linked in the description below. Jet Grand, thank you for your time, brother. We appreciate you, and uh, for everyone in the audience listening today, thanks for joining us today. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye. Yeah. Take care. Take care.